God's attributes, and the three main attributes are his greatness, his power, his greatness, his goodness, and his faithfulness. Amen? But today we are talking about what? Just the greatness of God within the limited time that we have. You see, as believers, there's someone inside of us. Christ in us. What? The hope of what? The hope of glory. The Bible tells us that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above what we ask or think according to what? The power that what? That dwells you know, so we, we have that attribute of God in us. Now, all we need to do is to activate that which God has given to us. And by praising and worshiping him exceedingly greatly, we can begin to abat that which is in us. Amen? Pray the Lord. Now, it's not all the time we have to do some rigorous things before we get manifestation of the power of God. Just simple obedience to instructions. Now, as you came here, now we say stand up, you stand up. Sit down, you sit down. Uh, clap, you clap. Uh, jump, you jump. It might look absurd, but that is, might be what God wants to use, what? To deliver somebody from sickness. Amen? Praise the Lord. Jump and you jump and all of that. Just simple things. Obedience could be what God is going to use to transform one's life, deliver from dead, and, and all of that. That is why we encourage you, um, give to God. Amen? It's an insurance against what? Poverty. Insurance against debt. The dog has died. His, what her giving revived, is that not? Those simple, simple things are very beneficial, but the enemy won't want us to do them. An insurance against poverty and all that. And against death, against sickness. I pray God will put us in the name. Uh, media, you have, you're not helping us. Amen. Praise this one man's quote. Is, uh, God, help us, God help us in Jesus' name. Uh, we say praise is not just a declaration of God's attributes, but a recognition of what? Of how these attributes can shape our lives. Amen? When you say God is great, God can shape your life and make it great. Amen? It's not just appreciate, appreciating God, um, singing His goodness and all of that. It's also how can this thing affect us. Those are the areas we want to go a little bit deeper. How can this affect our lives to become great as we think about his greatness? Talk about goodness. How can this also affect us? God's goodness. We talk of his power. How can we express, how can we experience this power of the almighty God? And we say it's simple, but these simple things, people don't do it. When you say, praise God, some put this fold their hands or put them in their pockets or not moving at all. When you, are, when you come to the house of God, I've told you repeatedly, you must honor the owner of the house. Unless you just came here to come and play. And life is not a play place. Life is a reality of both good and what? And evil. As you are here, now some people are doing some enchantment somewhere. I'm not talking of those in Agege, I'm talking of those here. And I pray that as believers, we shall have knowledge, and we shall apply that knowledge. We will not just be hearers of the word, but what? Doers of the word. Praise is potent. Amen? We are talking of how, as we begin to sing those praises, we can see them manifest in our lives. In our lives, in 
guiding us, in uh, helping us to overcome challenges. We're talking about the greatness of God now. As we begin to declare this greatness of God, apart from appreciating him, it's also we are talking of how can this help us to guide our lives, to direct our lives, and then to help us experience greatness in this world. And I pray the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Right. If you don't have it, let's go. Psalm 50 verse 23 says, Whoso offered praise, glorify me. And to him that uttered his conversation, I write, will I do what? Show the salvation of God. Amen? These attributes of God, we said, it can affect your life. How? To shape it. Amen? To guide you. To guide us. God is good. Hallelujah. Now, what God does, as I want to show you his goodness, is orchestrate things at, at a juncture of your life. Well, you might, might not be a believer very early in life, but if you're a believer in very early in the life, you can orchestrate your life um, through both pleasant and unpleasant circumstances. Amen? Through failure and success, valley. Um, Bally experience, mountain experience, failure, disappointment. He orchestrates your life. But we, are, we are declaring his goodness, but at least you failed a cause. That's, amen? And yet, God is using that to do what? To guide your life. So that by the time you as, as, assume at the zenith, you will not fall flat or fall from grace, what? To grace. As you are facing those challenges, is going ahead to position helpers. Are you, you, you would think, oh, I just met them by accident. No, God has already positioned those things to help you. But you know where you started from? You started from singing his praises. Glorify him and all of that. The, that you said, look, most of his, of his prayer, I, I bought praising God's attributes. No wonder he's very successful and the church word is also very successful in his time. I pray we shall borrow from his knowledge in Jesus' name. The attribute of God we direct and give us great experience, even this year in the name of Jesus. Well, like I've said, we're talking about God's greatness, God's goodness, and God's word, God's faithfulness. They're interwoven, they're interconnected. But then the underlying structure there is the greatness of God. God is great in all these areas. He surpasses human goodness. His greatness surpasses human kindness. If you are talking of somebody helping you, the help of God is greater than any other help that you can get. That's what I'm saying. The underlying structure, the foundation for all other attributes is God's greatness, God's power. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're talking of his word, what is behind the word of God? God God's word? God's uh, greatness, God's power is behind the word of God. You talk of the name of Jesus. What's behind that name? God's power, that greatness of God is behind the name. And we have been called into what arena of power. The church is a power center. Amen? And that's why we don't play with sickness, we don't play with poverty. As we see them, we attack them with the power that is behind the world. Amen? And inside our life, power resident in us. Praise the Lord. Bible says we shall, we shall receive power after who? The Holy Ghost has come into you. So we have that greatness of God in us. And I pray we shall exhibit that greatness in Jesus' name. Amen. What we are saying is, as we begin to sing that greatness... They begin to be battered in you. Begin to, you begin to experience what you are saying. It's a seed. You sow it to God, and God waters it back to you a hundredfold. But remember, Satan would not want to see God's greatness. Rather, he wants you to see God's weakness. Amen? Be 
because of the challenges you are going through. That is a trick of the devil. I must not buy into that at all. Whether we are weak and strong or strong, we must sing God's word. God's greatness not stop. And I pray God help us in Jesus' name. No matter how the church feels, uh, what is happening around you, you are disappointed, failure uh, here. Uh, but we must not be defined by that. We must be defined by the greatness of God. Like we have said, God's greatness and expression of his divine nature and power. Amen? He's seated in greatness. The elders, 24 elders, and the four beasts, they think of his, of his greatness. They ascribe to him more glory. They ascribe to him what? Honor. What else? Power. Every chapter 4. They are ascribing to God non-stop. And as you they do that, God makes sure that they are sustained in wherever their offices where they serve. Now, the problem with man is that by the time he gets little power or little money, then he relegates God's praise. Amen? Martin Nebuchadnezzar said, well, this is the kingdom I created by my power for myself. And God said, no. You are a liar. I put you there. So I pray that all of us, by the grace of God, the little blessings we have should help us to glorify God. Amen? The positions that we have, our achievement and success is life should be a criteria to worship God the more. You don't get closer to God when you are seeking for a blessing. You get closer to him when you get what? When you get the blessing. The mistake we make. When you don't go, when you don't worship God anymore, when you are blessed, you kind of limit yourself. And there's no wisdom in that. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For example, you are under $100 and you give tight. You go to 150 where you say, 1000 okay, yeah. go about you and pray that. Amen. By the time you are now going to some figures that are high, you say, ah, you now put pen on it. You do mathematics, uh, my gas, my clothes, uh, my medications, my knows this, my knows that. By the time you know it, you have even pay less than when you are struggling. Praise the Lord. The best of us are listening to, that is, what do you call the, the freezer, what do you call him in Nigeria? What do you call him? You don't even know him. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That man would have changed. Maybe he's even paying his tax. But you have read, you have read the one? Swallow the garment. Swallow the hook. Um, and the hook of poverty. We said repeatedly. How God honors his, his, his word is by his power. Amen. And we must acknowledge it by faith. And we must let it shape our daily action. Amen? If God says I should forgive you, why should I query God? That's what we are saying. We should believe in that power of reward that if I forgive, God is what? He's going to what? Forgive me. And there must not be any other element in my heart that if I, by God's grace I don't have anybody in my mind. Amen? So I can, if I, I can sleep beside the water when my head is up. Praise the Lord. The same thing, when God says do this, we must all, we must do it. We must acknowledge his greatness. Amen. No matter what you are passing through, God is great. Hallelujah. God's greatness can be seen in creation. What he created. The intergalaxies, the uh, all those planets that we don't see. Some millions of years ahead, and all that with the space. They say space is a large, I don't know how true it is. Galaxies and all of that. Of course, if you talk of the planet Earth, look at how big the ocean is. If the ocean is hang, very angry, it can swallow. <laughs> I don't know how many minutes, swallow the earth up. But God has put boundary there. In God's greatness, He spread the heavens and He made us in this earth. Even, our, even ourselves, the complexity of how we are made. 
tells us that God is great. Amen? God's love knows no bound. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. It's never come to an end. They are new. New. Great is faithfulness. God's faithfulness is not an excuse to commit sin, but... Through Jesus, he still preserves our lives. Amen? And he's given us enough room to repent. If not for God's faithfulness, I don't know how many of us would have been alive by now. As you take that life, bah, you're dead. But God has preserved us, of course. It's not an excuse because judgment day, <laughs> everything will be there, clean and clear. A sinner cannot inherit what? the kingdom of God. But now we are enjoying that grace. We must explore it through repentance. God help us in Jesus' name. His love knows no bound. And inside the love is God's mercy. Amen? That's why I said these are the omnibus, the three are great attributes of God. Inside the love of God is God's mercy, God's compassion, and all all of God's, those benevolence that we are enjoying uh, abound, are uh, inside God's, God's faithfulness, God's love towards us. And I pray we shall enjoy it even to the end in Jesus' name. Amen. His love knows no bound. But Paul of Tarsus, how terrible he was to the church, when he repented, what happened? God forgive him. He wrote most, he wrote most of, the, of, what, of the New Testament. I've told us repeatedly, um, don't believe to yourself and say, well, I can't do this, I can't do that. Why? Because of sin. No, repent from your sins. The devil that is playing a trick on you. Repent and serve God. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't hold on to anything where because of the, that might be element of laziness. God's power is insurmountable. Amen? It does what pleases him where? In heaven and on earth. That's why by the grace of God, you can look at somebody who is very poor and say, believe in God that this fellow that I'm seeing is going to be very rich one day. Amen? He can turn anybody around. He takes the poor from the dust, beggar from the donkey, is that not? And place them where? Among princes to rule where? On this earth. Failure is not your name. Amen. Praise the Lord. And somebody's failure also must not be a point of our comfort. Of celebrating uh, 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 we have passed. Uh, in our church, uh, we have many, so many uh, doctors. No, 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 no. Those are even foolishness. Praise the Lord. <laughs> which is your church? Which is their church? The church of Jesus Christ. You know? His power is insurmountable. But we say he, he places one up and he, bro, he brings another fellow what? down. So that's why we that are here, we must, as we celebrate God, must not believe to ourselves. Amen? We must. Not just assuming it, like we said, we must experience the greatness of God. What we are just saying is that this greatness can be battered, can be revealed, can be released into our lives as we what? As we celebrate the source of greatness. Amen? And where you are now is just the beginning. You must not rest on our own as well. I have arrived. You don't pray. You don't read your Bible anymore. You don't give to God anymore. Uh, church um, is for the boys, for the youth, girls. Going to church. That's how it happened over there in Europe. Before you know it, all the churches have become cinema grounds, maybe bar houses, because they don't, people don't go to church anymore. It's for the children. Before you know it, children have gone. So as you are coming, come with your children. God bless you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Power is insurmountable, like we said. He 
things. God is greater than any human and any circumstances. I think we have touched that. Any human, any circumstances. So just place your feet on your problems. Downgrade your problems and, up, and, uh, and uplift God. Declare a day of praise. Today I'm going to praise God. And I know things will change. Amen. Amen. But you don't know, have a problem before you start to do that. Today is going to be a day of praising God. I'm not going to ask for anything. I pray the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. The greatness of God manifesting in your life. So as we praise God today, let's celebrate His greatness. Amen. And this, of course, His goodness and His power. To us. Just our celebrate, we are concentrating only on greatness today. God has given us greatness through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we don't have to look for it anywhere. It's through Jesus Christ. God has given us what? Greatness. And as we accept him, we become great in him. Hallelujah. But that greatness must be manifested in our lives. So as we praise him today, I pray that that greatness of God shall be manifested in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30 says, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who has made unto us wisdom, from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and what? And redemption. Christ has been made all in all for all of us. And I pray that there will be this manifestation of righteousness of God in our lives. We stand for foundation upon which God can build. You cannot be great if you are living in sin. God help us in Jesus' name. So God has been made our righteousness, has made our sanctification, and our what? And our holiness. As we accept him, by the grace of God, this righteousness will begin to manifest in your life. And in my life, in the mighty name of Jesus. We cannot be great in sin. So that's why we have to repent from your sins. Because the fact that you are not dead doesn't mean that there is no punishment for sin. The witness of sin is what? It's dead. And everything we do, we must endeavor that is acceptable before God. Amen? Amen. When God looks at, at our record on the last day, he should be so, ah, uh, this is my son. He, he honored me. He feared me. And he repented from sins. Is anybody like in the house today who say, well, I want to honor God. I want to glorify him. I know he's great. And he can release great, greatness into my life. But, but this is in my life. When those spots are there, we need to walk on them. Amen? Praise the Lord. We don't just hear the word of God and go away like that. Remember, when we leave, we are old, we are going to go give account of ourselves. But our praise is not only going to be here, it prepares us for heaven. Our giving prepares us for, for heaven. Our cars, our houses, our achievement in life, we're going to leave them here. Amen? But as we begin to praise God, we are training for heaven. Amen? So whatever will not allow us to make it, let us drop them. But this month, of, this month we are, let's drop them. Beginning from today. Amen? Let's, this May become the best May of our lives. And I pray God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we rise? Amen.